Hello there everybody. We're doing something a little bit different today. I'm actually going to do a review on a tarot deck and this is a tarot deck that I have had for a long time. As a matter of fact, I bought my first deck of this kind uh, back in 2011 and I had to retire that deck after three or four years and I'm actually on my second deck like this. And the deck that I'm reviewing today is my Wildwood Tarot. This is the book that came along with the deck. Um, my box is long, long, long gone, even for the second deck. Um, I do like to buy the box set whenever I buy the tarot. Excuse me, I don't like pink on my teeth. Um, but this deck is actually, the Wildwood Tarot is actually the tarot deck that I learned to read tarot on. So I have a little bit of a special place in my heart for this deck. I've never actually reviewed it though. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to review a deck that I've had long enough to really know the ins and the outs of the fact that I've actually had two of these. Um, when I first bought the deck originally in 2011, it had the border around it, but it did not have the tree. Kind of wish I would have saved those now because I don't know how many of those were made. But last publication that I bought had the tree version on it. Now you can tell from the wear marks on my deck. Like I said, I've been using this a long time. I am actually a professional uh, psychic tarot reader. So these have gotten a lot of use, which also I think makes this a little bit different than like a box opening uh, when we're doing the review. I can really tell you the nitty gritty uh, what I actually think about this deck over time. So um, let's just jump right in. First of all, I have to tell you, I would recommend this deck to anybody. Um, I was drawn to it because um, I have a little bit of a uh, leaning towards Druidism. I have a curiosity there. Um, I also am very much uh, somebody who likes to be out in nature and really enjoys nature. Um, I grew up on a farm from the time I was five years old up to my adult years. And um, I lived for nine years in Colorado where I got to go hiking in the mountains quite a bit. And so nature has become sort of my touchstone to get grounded and heal, do some healing. And a lot of people do that. So. Um, for me, that was what originally drew me to this duck was the fact that there's so much nature in it. Now, um, I don't even remember who the creators of this duck are. I guess I should tell you that, huh? Uh, Mark Ryan and John Matthews and the illustrations were by Will Worthington. So I just love this deck because of a lot of things. Like I said, I learned tarot on this deck. So the thing that I didn't know when I first bought this deck to learn on was that a lot of the meanings are somewhat different. Uh, the worldview of the creators is a little bit more nature oriented, a little bit more um, esoterical oriented. Um, if I can say then some of the traditional decks that you see, I mean, all of them are esoterical, but these acknowledge a little bit more of the spiritual essence of things than some of the other decks that I've worked with. Um, and I have to tell you, the court cards are all still court cards, um, but a lot of the court cards actually don't have people on them. They actually have animals. And when you go through the book, you know, and most people will tell you, read the book once and throw it away. I'm sorry, I can't throw it away. <laughs> I do only read through the book once. I may not even make it all the way through, but I just can't throw the book away. Um, but when you go through and you read the descriptions of the court cards, what you get is a rundown of the animals that are on the court cards. And a lot of the court cards to me have very different meanings after through um, about them and I just I'm gonna I'm just like thumbing through to give you some examples right now my cards are in no particular order they're still in the same order they were in after I did the last reading that I just finished up so I just want to find a few and give you some ideas of some of the types of messages that can come up now the court cards do still refer to people sometimes I do have them refer to people I kind of have to go into my psychic uh, 
abilities to figure out whether the meaning is supposed to be about that particular court person or whether it's supposed to be about kind of the experience or the personality um, that comes up on the card. So just randomly I pulled out four court cards just to kind of take a look to show you what I mean by this. So here we have the Queen of Bows which will be the Queen of Wands and other decks and you can see that it's labeled as hair. So what we have whenever we really uh, dig into this card is this is actually talking about a person but it's talking about a very specific thing. It's talking about the idea of working behind the scenes, not working for uh, credit or accolades, but just doing something behind the scenes because somebody actually cares. So this is an experience for me just as often as it's actually talking about the Queen of Bows. Okay, and you know the Queen of Bows is normally a very self-made woman and so if somebody is self-made, running their own business, a lot of times they really have to be in the middle of networking and they have to be making sure that people know what they do and all of this good stuff. So it's a little bit of a different type of um, experience or um, a different type of read than you would normally get like off of a Queen of Bows, which would be self-made woman, entrepreneur, out there in the world type of thing. This is acting behind the scenes. So um, very different. And then also one of the things that I really like about this deck just happens to be on this card. And that is that if you look at the bottom of the card here, right by the rabbit's foot or the hare's foot, what you see, I don't know if my camera will, if I can get in the center, my camera might focus on that a little more. There's like almost a mask of the green man and the green man would be like the emperor um, in this particular deck. And when I have that mask of the green man come up, it doesn't stand out to me generally so much whenever I'm reading this card right side up, but I do read my cards in reverse. I don't think you're supposed to with this deck. I think the creators tell you not to. Um, I figure once I've paid for the deck, I'm gonna read it however I want. So that's how that works in my world. But once this card is upside down, if it comes in that way to me, then this becomes a whole different meaning. This is usually what my eye gets drawn to first. And when I see the mask of the green man, then that tells me that there's somebody showing up in the reading that has a message that is somebody who has number one, crossed over already. Number two, they are a male figure. Um, number three, they're somebody who had authority over this person or rank in some way, whether it's a father, uncle, mentor, whatever, you know, so this is a very different meaning that you're not going to pull off of most, you're really not going to find somebody coming through in a deck um, on most of the decks that I've worked with. I don't have a lot of references to people who have crossed over. So this is a really nice uh, meaning that shows up for me on that. So that's just one court card and you can see, you know, lots of great different meanings, different benefits of that, not to mention the artwork. The artwork on this deck is fantastic. I love the artwork on this deck. I just, I can't imagine anybody depicting this better. So the next court card I want to show you guys is the Page of Vessels, and this is labeled the Otter in this deck. So Page of Vessels, you know, that would be like the Page of Cups, the Page of Chalices. You know, that's a message of some, from somebody letting them know how much they care about you. Um, but in this deck with the I really see this more as somebody who's very comfortable going back and forth either between two places. I have had this come up for a lady who um, this came up in her environment uh, position and the spread that I was using for her. And this card was telling me that she had multiple homes and she was very comfortable going back and forth between two homes. But mostly I see this card as when it's just not in a particular position, I see this card as being able, being very comfortable going back and forth between being up above the water in the air and being down below the water in what we would consider emotions with water. So air is thoughts, water is emotions. This tells me when this card comes up right side up that somebody is very comfortable um, in thinking things over and also feeling things, that a lot of times their heart will match up with their head. So there's not a lot of dispute when they're making decisions because a lot of times the head and the heart actually agree. 
So this is how I read this card a lot of times, is that somebody is, is really in a good place on a decision, that they are not having a lot of inter, inner turmoil. Now, example of another court card, what we have next is the Page of Stones, which is also the Lynx. Now normally a Page of Stones would be like a Page of Pentacles or a Page of Coins. And so when you have the links come up, normally this would be a message, a good message about money or material goods that's coming in to your querent or the person you're reading for. So whenever this card shows up, it means something completely different to me because the links is all about balance. And he's even got this super long tail to help him balance. And he's also all about looking for the right time to um, pounce on an opportunity. So he's not going to rush into an opportunity too soon. He's also going to be careful not to wait too late to take up an opportunity. Timing is very important with a lynx. So you've got timing and balance are both messages that come in for me on this card much more often than actually good news about money. This is about, you know, really paying attention to timing as far as, you know, when do you ask your boss? raise, that type of thing. Um, it's also really good for paying attention to balance in uh, home life, family life, work life, um, just mental balance, you know, and staying focused on the right things. Um, so there's a couple of meanings that come out of this that to me have really not so much to do with the regular average meaning of the court card. So you can see that with this deck, these court cards really have a lot of different ways that you can read them and I really I appreciate that because a lot of these meanings that come up with these court cards are not so much in some of the other decks that I have um, and I've got a few <laughs> I'm a pro professional reader so as you can imagine I've got a few um, the next card that I want to talk about that just came out randomly actually is the Knight of Arrows and it's labeled as the Hawk now, for me, a lot of times, like I said, I don't see it as a court card. Usually when this comes up, this is telling me more about something that's going on in the person across the table from me's life or on the other end of the phone line or on the other end of the video camera. Um, this is basically just telling me that somebody is making a decision and they are looking, they're breaking it down. They're looking at all the little bits and pieces that add up to the bottom line and they're looking at all the details and considering all the details so that they can make the best decision. And then when it comes in in reverse, then we've got somebody that is confused. And advice for that is don't try to break it down so much. Just bottom line it because you're going to be confused if you look at all the little details for whatever that particular situation is. So I love that. I love that the court cards are so versatile and um, can really be used to see situations just as much as they can be used as people whenever they show up. Now, like I said, you know, if you're a straight up tarot reader and you don't use intuition when you're reading your cards, that could be kind of confusing and I can see that. I've never read cards without using my intuition though, so I don't know, I don't even know what that would be like. Um, so you just have to use your intuition whenever you come to these court cards to figure out, is this talking about a person for your client? or for the person that you're reading for, or is this talking about a situation more likely? So you go into, you kind of have to dig into your psychic abilities to see that. Um, I also happen to love, this card just happens to be on top and looking at me. This is called the Seer. This is basically like your psychic in this tarot deck. This would be, I can't even think of the name of what this would be. Actually, this would be your high priestess. And there is so much symbolism in this card, everything from the owl feathers and the shawl to the water to the tree behind the lady. I mean, there is every, there, every element is symbolized in this card. There's so much thought and detail that goes into these cards that just makes them absolutely phenomenal. Just phenomenal, okay? Major Arcana, Pip cards, doesn't matter. I mean, the artwork is just fantastic. There's so much to to really get your messages from here, if you're like me, where I just look at what's popping out at me from this card and what does that mean to me. So um, on to other parts of, the, of this. The other thing that I think is always important is how does a card feel 
in our hands. And I really like the card stock on this. Now obviously these are well used. I've probably had these for like four years. This is one of my ones that shows less signs of use, but these have been shuffled and shuffled and shuffled. I bet you this particular deck has been shuffled several times almost every single day almost every single day for four years and you know really the quality how it's holding up you know it's it's near the end of its life cycle we could say that but for four years to hold up being shuffled every day this is some nice quality stock this is some nice quality ink you know this is this is really a nice quality duck to have for somebody who's not a pro who's using these you know just maybe a couple of times a week you know, this is going to be something that lasts you for decades. This is really a nice, solid, sturdy deck. Um, the other thing that I like about this deck is the size of it. I haven't actually measured the size of it. I might have should have done that before I came on camera. My hands are a little bit bigger than the average females because I'm tall. I'm 5'11". But I can hold this in my hands and I can shuffle this without having any kind of trouble with it. And that's important to me. I'm not so sure somebody with smaller hands that maybe is like five foot four and has the appropriate size hands for that height, this might be a little bit of a harder grip for them to wrap their hands around. This might be something where you shuffle it more along, you know, like tall, shuffle it the tall way instead of sideways. But I really, I, and I like that the cards you know, they shuffle really well. They shuffle nicely. They don't get hung on each other. And they're also not too slick. They're that nice medium, um, that nice medium thickness as far as the finish. So the finish really lets them slide nicely without letting them get away from you and slide away, which um, I have had some decks where the finish is glossy enough that sometimes the cards will slide away. These are a nice, comfortable, comfortable shuffle. So, um, I guess the other thing that I should tell you about is the book. The explanations in this book are very thorough. They go in depth. They even um, show you some spreads at the end. And I don't think that they give you any reverse meanings. I think they want you to read all of these right side up. But you know, when you're psychic intuitive, it's not too hard to come up with reverse meanings. But like each of the pip cards, you have a full page for each pip card of explanation. And this is, you know, this gives you more than enough to work with. Even if you're a new reader, this is really, um, this is really a nice uh, book to kind of start with, to give you some really great ideas about things. They even give you keywords on each of the cards. And they also show you like how each of the cards um, would fit into a timeline. Like if you want to know time of year based on the cards that you're looking at, you could use that chart to find that out. Now I've never really dug into that so much. Um, I find that stuff more by just asking questions than through my Claire audience typically. So that's not something I've ever really dug into in the tarot. But if that's something that you wanted to, that you know, that chart there is really handy for that. So I would highly recommend this deck. Even, you know, a lot of times people will say, you know, if you're going to start reading the tarot, you should start with the Rider weight. To be honest, I've never bought a deck of Rider weight in the whole seven years that I've been reading professionally or before that. And I've, I've just never been drawn to it. I'm kind of a sucker for artwork. Um, this was my first deck, and I'm going to tell you, I think it's a really good one to learn on. The explanations are very thorough. Um, you just have to know that the next deck that you pick up is going to have a little bit of a different slant because this has a different slant than anything else that I've run across that's out there. As far as how they look at some of these cards, some of these card meanings are a little bit different than the traditional. Okay? But I would highly recommend it. I would, you know... Um, if I had a friend that wanted to start reading the tarot right now and they wanted me to tell them what deck should they get, well, I probably wouldn't tell them. I would tell them they need to feel that out. I would explain how to do that. But if I wasn't telling them they needed to feel that out, I would recommend the Wildwood pretty highly. I think that with the box set and getting the, the book along with the deck, it's a really good starter. 
it's a really good starter deck and it's also it's great for somebody who's more advanced too because like I said there are some different things and it's nice to have different decks on the table so that you do have decks that have different meanings going on that you can pull from so that whatever message your person needs to hear it's going to have a chance to come up. So that's what I've got. I hope you guys enjoy this. I am going to put a link down below in case you guys would like to order a deck like this for yourself. Like I said, I'd highly recommend it. So there's going to be that information. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day and enjoy your tarot reading.